Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today, this evening, whenever you're watching this vlog? It is currently 3.20, just turned, 3.26 p.m. on uh, Saturday afternoon. It's actually not too cold outside today. Let's see what the temperature is. Um, it is 53 degrees outside. It's supposed to get, actually get colder a little bit than over the next couple days. Oh, tomorrow's supposed to be a high of 36. <laughs> Burr! It's gonna be cold tomorrow. I said it's cold in here. And then 40, and then 48, 42, so yeah, but not a lot of Christmas type weather. The 23rd is supposed to be 48 and uh, rainstorm. So it looks like we're not gonna have a white Christmas this year, which makes me really sad. It's always the only thing I want for Christmas is a white Christmas, but it's whatever, I guess. Um, how are you guys doing today? Are you having a good day? Actually, I actually have my lip gloss out here because I just filmed my uh, drama video for the day. Um, I thought it was gonna only be like a 20 or 30, I thought it, like max would be like a 30 minute video. It ended up being like an hour, so. Um, I usually am pretty good about taking in my lip gloss and my fan and everything after I film out here, but I left this out here. So put a little lip gloss on. I got up today and um, I took Boo Radley out and um, let him run around for a little bit, got him a treat, and then um, took him back upstairs because like Alex had gotten up earlier and then he went back to sleep. And so, um, Alex had given Boo Radley his medicine and stuff earlier today and then took him and ran around and he was up for a little while and whatever. Playing his game on his phone and all that kind of stuff and then and looking at TikToks. And then he went back to sleep and so I took Boo Radley, you know, back upstairs and got him settled into bed and stuff like that. This treat. And then I was like, I'm gonna make a drama video. So I came out here. I'd literally been up for, well, did my prayers and meditations and all that kind of stuff too. So I'd been up for like, 10 or, well, no, probably, I think I said 10 minutes in my, in my drama video, but it had been longer than that because I did my prayers and meditations too, but I hadn't been that long, honestly. I hadn't been up for that long um, because we are going to this birthday party tonight and we have to leave here at about five. And in all honesty, I woke up today, I kind of been thinking about it last night. Um, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just take Saturday. I know. I'm so tired of talking about this too. <laughs> but this is just my process. This is what I do over here. I was like, maybe I'll just take Saturday and Sunday off and just kind of like, you know, like uh, watch some stuff before I get ready for this party and then um, come home and watch some shows tonight, go to brunch tomorrow and hang out. But I think I am going to take tomorrow off all day. So I won't be filming a vlog tomorrow and um, I won't be filming videos on any of my channel and then, uh, channels and then I'll come back on Monday and I will be fresh and ready. I already have videos for my review video channel, videos for my Peter Does Stuff channel, uh, drama videos to make, all that kind of stuff. So on Monday, I will be back with videos, hopefully maybe on all of my channels on Monday, including my booktube channel. So, yeah, um, and so I got up today and I did that and um, filmed the drama video and now I am vlogging before I uh, get in the shower. Well, I'm gonna do a cup of coffee face mask and then um, and trim my beard. I trimmed it, yes, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day before I trimmed it because it was before I did that morning routine video. So trim my beard, shave a little bit, then do a cup of coffee face mask and then get in the shower, and I think this is pretty low key, so I'm just gonna wear like jeans. I think I might wear my new boots that I got, my new, uh, those, uh, I can't remember what the brand is called, but they, they're the ones, I showed them on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I haven't actually worn them yet, and they zip up on the side, they're these brown boots. I think I might wear those with like a flannel shirt, and these jeans that I have that have holes in it and stuff like that, so. Um, the party starts at five, um, I have a feeling I'll probably go late. It's like really, really close to us. They live like less than five minutes away. So Alex was like, um, cause I have a feeling it'll be like, you know, the birthday party for the, it's like for his coworker's husband or friend's husband. It'll probably go for like an hour or two. And then like the, it'll just be like him and his girlfriend's hanging out and stuff like that. So at that point I'm probably just gonna be like, cause he was like, you know, you can like, if you get bored, like I can just run you home and whatever. And I'm like, okay. So 
I'm planning on staying for a couple hours and then I'm coming back home and watching some reality TV because last night I started watching some shows. Um, yeah, but I'm real excited about that. And then tomorrow Alex was, uh, we're doing brunch and then Alex asked me if he was like, do you want to go see a movie tomorrow? Because there's a couple movies out that we want to go see. Um, we want to see the new Hunger Games, that Songbirds thing. I actually have that book on Audible and never listened to it. It's incredibly long. It's like 18 hour audible book or something like that. I never listened to it. I know he really wants to see it. I want to see it too. Um, but there's actually quite a few movies um, that are on um, the internet right now, or not the internet, but are on like the streaming services right now that I want to see. We still have not seen Haunting in Venice. <clears throat> People keep on asking me if it's like a paranormal movie. The Haunting of Venice is an Agatha Christie book, so I, I don't believe it probably, it's more of a mystery than a paranormal book, is what I have to think. I don't know anything about it. Um, and then we want to watch Five Nights at Freddy's, which is like a horror movie. Um, and there's a couple other movies that came out. Has anybody seen Bad Mom's Christmas? We were watching House of Villains last night, and at the beginning of House of Villains, because we recorded it, was the end of um, Bad Mom's Christmas. And it looked kind of funny, and I was like, is this like a funny movie? Like, I, I saw it come out last year or the year before, but we never watched it, so I might watch that. Going into this week, we've got two weeks until Christmas Eve, and so my plan is to start, like, really... Die Hard listening to, and, and Die Hard will be one of those, watching Christmas movies. And yes, I do consider Die Hard and Die Hard, well, all of them Christmas movies. Well, not all of them. I think there's one that doesn't take place on Christmas, but I love, actually, I like Die Hard 2 that takes place in the airport in New York City. I like it better than Die Hard 1. It's very, it's more Christmassy. There's a lot of snow and stuff like that. But I love the Die Hard movies. So, and I want to watch Gremlins this year, too. I haven't um, watched Gremlins the last couple years, and I keep on seeing it come up on lists for, like, Christmas movies. So that's one of the, the movies that I want to watch. I'm going to have to go inside in a second because I'm going to have to start uploading my drama video to make sure that it's ready to go before we leave this party. So to start getting it uploaded, I'm going to have to stop this in probably about 10 minutes and make sure that, because um, it will be done rendering by then, and I can start uploading it. But anyway... Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so um, that's today. And I'm excited about going to this party. This will be fun tonight. Um, I don't really know a lot of these people. I mean, I know a few of them because it's like some of the people that he works with closely. Like I know a couple of the, the women that he works with closely. <clears throat> and actually, the person's house that we're going to, this is kind of funny. The person's house that we're going to that's throwing the party, it's not, it's this other person's husband, but they're throwing the party for him. Um... It's like one of Alex's like really good friends and coworkers, and she's married to this guy that I went to high school with, who was not very nice to me in high school. He was like, well, his, he wasn't personally not. I don't remember him like personally doing anything, but he was definitely part of the group. And so like when she and Alex like um, started hanging out, becoming friends and whatever, he was Alex was like, oh, you went to high school with her husband and stuff like that. And I was like, I did. And she, he was like, yeah. And he was like, so-and-so. And I was like, <laughs> like I remembered him immediately, right? And um, so Alex was like, what, do you remember him in high school? And I was like, I totally remember him in high school. I don't think actually he like, he went to another, he went to like a, like a private school like the last two years so like this would have only been my like sophomore year but I was like yeah like I totally remember him um and I was like he was part of that group that was not nice to me in high school and so his wife said something to him and he was like really like apologetic about it like genuinely authentically like really apologetic about it and so um now it's like everything is like totally cool between us and he's like a really really nice guy and stuff like that but I think that just goes to prove that, you know, like, over time, I think that's one of the reasons why, like, I was so happy that I went to my 20-year reunion because um, what I went there to get and what I got were two completely different things, you know? And I think it just goes to prove that, like, people really do change over time and things like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with, in all honesty, like, when people start having kids and having their own families. Like, you know, I've talked about that on my drama channel as well, but, like, I think maybe the way they were, they don't want their kids to be treated the same way or, you know, they wouldn't be okay if their their kids were that way. And so they see it in a different light, if that makes sense. Um, 
But like when I went to my 20 year reunion and so many people from high school have reached out to me and I mean, and made full amends, not just said I'm sorry, but like made full amends and just been really, people have like brought things, I don't talk about this very often in here, but like, I mean, people have brought specific things to me that like literally I had no clue who had done that to me in high school. Like it was stuff like stuff, to, you know, like my car, stuff to my locker or things like that. <laughs> mean notes that I was left, things like that, that I <coughs> literally had no idea who had done it. And um, people have reached out to me over the years. And, so, and interestingly enough, it wasn't all guys. It was some girls too. And said, um, like I, I like, I feel really bad that I did this and, you know, like, I, I just want to take, like, ownership over it and, you know, and whatever. And, um, so, yeah, there's a couple of us that are, um, so hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, there's a couple of us that are all sober together, too. So, that's kind of interesting, you know, <laughs> like, when you're on somebody's amends list from how they treated you in high school. I mean, that's kind of weird, you know? Like, but full circle moment. But a lot of those people, I can't really think of one person, in all honesty, uh, may, maybe like one or two, but I, like, they don't even really live here anymore, and I don't think, like, high school's even, like, on their, I'm not giving an excuse, but I don't think their high school's even, like, on their radar anymore for them to <coughs> think about me or reach out to me to do that but I've had so many people do that and like my 20 year high school reunion when I went there like I went there to show like you didn't you didn't take me down you didn't get me right and so many people were so apologetic and <clears throat> a lot of people like said stuff to me like I'm really like they'll, they would say things like I remember this one guy and um and he said to me like I I don't remember like if I did say something, but if I did, I'm really sorry. And like, and he kind of, he alluded to something that he had said or done. And I had never like, he was never like on my radar that he had ever said anything mean to me. So many people were like so interested in me and just so like genuinely nice. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't BS. It wasn't like they were just doing that, you know, whatever. Like they were genuinely being really nice and were interested in my life and things like that. and. I think that was like a pivotal moment for me. I remember I took this friend of mine that uh, we both went to high school together and she was one of the girls that like really defended me a lot, like was one of my ride or dies in high school. And she got kind of upset. She's at that point still kind of like, she's not so much anymore, but she was just like at a really like kind of like better place in her life and things weren't going right and whatever. And I can remember I was just like, I would be like talking to somebody that was like literally like at the center of my bully group, right? And just being like, oh yeah, and what do you do today? And they were like, I'm so sorry for what you went through in high school and whatever, you know? And because a lot of people here in town knew that I was like doing anti bullying campaigns and, you know, speaking on panels and things like that. A lot of people knew that, you know, and sharing my experience with like school administrators and stuff like that about like implementing anti bullying campaigns in the schools. That was something that was like known. And so a lot of people were coming up to me and being like, hey, if I was ever part of that, like, I'm really sorry. And my friend, like, had a really hard time with it. She was like, I don't understand why you're just accepting these people's apologies. Like, they were, like, so hurtful to you in high school and stuff. And I was like, you know, I just don't want to hold on to that forever. Like, I just don't. Like, if they can acknowledge it and realize that they hurt me and they're sitting in front of me making a sincere apology to me and saying that, like, they've changed. And, and it wasn't even just that. It was, like, so many of them... Like, I remember my biggest bully, like, when we went out and had coffee, and he has twin daughters, and they're, like, in college now and stuff, and he's, like, a really nice guy. It's so funny, I, I like, say that, I get kind of, like, a smirk on my face, because he is, he's, like, such a nice guy, right? And I just, I feared him every day of going to school, and I remember when we sat down, and at the time, like, if his daughters are, like, 20 now, this would have been, I mean, they would have been, like, five or six, and I remember he just was, like, crying, and he just was, like... I'm so sorry. Like his wife was like the one that brought it attention to him, brought attention to him about this thing that I had put like up about on Facebook and whatever. And and he was like, you know, like I feel so horrible about what happened. And he was like, you know, and and explained to me like you didn't know like and this, he was like this is no excuse, but there was a lot of stuff going on at home. And you know, for me, like this was like really like. I didn't realize like there was a human being that was being hurt 
Um, and it was, you know, all for me to be like, you know, the laughing center of attention kind of thing and at your expense, right? Like he never thought that like I was the one that was getting hurt at that expense. And, um, and I can remember him saying like, I would be so upset if anybody treated my daughters the way that you, that I treated you. And it was in that moment that I was like, it's over. Like we're not, like I'm not holding on to this anymore. Like that makes me, like I just like remember that moment. Like this was like, there's like grace. Like there is grace in this world, you know? Because I didn't want his daughters to live through. Like, you know, people talk about karma and things like that. Well, I think karma, well, first of all, I'm not sure that karma exists sometimes, but I don't know why I'm getting emotional about that. But like, I wouldn't want anybody's kids at the expense of what they did to live through what I went through or anything like that, you know? Um, God, it's so weird that I'm crying over that. I don't even know why. I still like when I run into people from high school, like I'll see people randomly, right? There's this girl that, girl, there's this woman that I went to, I mean, I literally went to like, I mean, I talk about my friend. I mean, I went to kindergarten, elementary, junior high, high school and everything with this girl, right? Not college and graduate school, but she lives like one neighborhood over from me. And she walks, and when I get up early, she walks, walks through our neighborhood with like three of her friends and they like all have like coffee cups and are walking through and she always like waves over. And one day I saw her and I was, cause we're friends on Facebook and I was like, that cannot be her. Or like, does she live that close to me? So I sent her a message on Facebook and I was like, did you walk by my house this morning? Like I was sitting on my front porch and she was like, was that you? She was like so sweet. She was like, oh my God. She was like, we all thought it was like good looking guy sitting on the front porch. And we're like, who is that out there drinking coffee? She was so nice, but she was like, oh yeah, like my friend got me like walking through your neighborhood all the time. She lives in a real cute neighborhood over here. <clears throat> and it's so weird, like even when I see people like from high school today, or like people, it's not just high school, it's like junior high, all of it, elementary school. Sometimes like the pains of elementary school were worse than the pains of high school. But when I see those people today, sometimes it's like, oh, God, I don't know why I got so emotional about that. Um, but sometimes I like, I don't even really know how to explain it. Sometimes I still feel like I'm not good enough. And like when I see them, I have to be like, hey, how are you? And it's like so good to see you and whatever. Because like I can tell you right now, like nobody talked to me in high school other than my friends. Like nobody, nobody. I mean, it was like crickets. Nobody talked to me, right? Nobody acknowledged me. So now when I'm out somewhere and it's like the most popular person that I graduated with is like stopping me in the middle of a mall. Oh, Peter Mon, oh my God, it's so good to see you. And I'm like, you like literally never talked to me for 12 years of my life, right? So it's weird, but like, I'm not gonna be rude about it. What's really strange is this, I have to tell you, is that my cousin, so my cousin went to North Central, I went to Carmel, which were rival schools, um, both about the same size and whatever. Caroline was three years ahead of me. So we have a lot of like crossover groups <clears throat> now, when I was in high school, I was like complete rebel, punk rock, all that kind of stuff. Caroline was not. Caroline was very popular in high school. She was the president of like the her the sorority and all this kind of stuff. And so, um, she was like, just we were very different friend groups in high school. What's interesting is Caroline has like three really close friends of hers that are girls that I went to like elementary, junior high, and high school with that were very, very popular when I was like in high school. And it's it's interesting today, like when I see them, um, like I'll be talking to Caroline, or I'll be in the car with Caroline and they'll like call and stuff. And then I'll say, hey, how are you doing? It's so good to hear from you. Whenever they're like really super friendly to me. But like when I saw them, like the last time I saw one of them was at my uncle's funeral a couple years ago. And it's just so bizarre to see them and I'm like, I literally sat next to these people, you know, for 12 years of my life and now they see me some specific way. And it's weird them seeing me through the eyes of Caroline's cousin because they see me in a completely different way, like in a very human way, you know? And, and one of these girls was always very, very nice to me. But this one girl that Caroline's friends with, and I told Caroline this and she's like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. This one girl that Caroline's friends with, 
I'll never forget, she said to me one time in high school, she turned around, and she'd always been like pretty nice before this, but she turned around to me and she said, you know, you'd probably be pretty popular if you get rid of all these freaks. And she turned back around, like, because all my friends were like, kind of like different in high school or whatever, you know? And I remember her saying that to me, and I can remember thinking, and are you gonna start hanging out with me and invite me to think? Because these, these girls that have my back, that are my best friends, like they are my ride or die. Like they will do anything for me. I don't see you standing up for me in no hallway, you know? So anyway, but people change over time, I think. I don't think the people that did those things to me when I was like in high school are the same people today, or maybe they are, I don't know. But I want to hope that people can change and grow for the better because if other people can, then I can too, you know? All right, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to start uploading this video, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Alex is inside. He just made some pizzas in the air fryer, and he's watching uh, First Wives Club. And it is, <clears throat> I looked at the clock right before I came out here. It was at 3.51. My uh, phone is inside now. <laughs> and um, I said to him, I said, what time do we have to leave? Because... I thought we had to leave at like 5. And he was 5.30 or 6. And I said, oh, I thought the party started at 5. And he's like, we don't have to get there right on time, which is so funny because he usually wants to get places like right on time. So I was like, okay, that gives me a little bit more time to uh, finish the vlog and get the videos up. And then this can render. And then I can be uploading this while I'm gone at the party. And then I can upload it or post it as soon as I get back. So anyway, yeah, about all that. I don't know. I just, uh, I don't even remember exactly what I was talking about, but... I like to hope that, you know, people can change. I referenced this on my drama channel the last couple days, but like a really valuable lesson that I learned in recovery that I don't even really know that I understood it when I first heard it. My sponsor said it to me was, you have to want for other people what you want for yourself. And really it's a humanizing factor. It's a way of seeing people the way that you would want people to see you. Um, and, and also to be able to, you know, forgiveness is really for us. Um, that's why I love the definition of forgiveness by Oprah, that forgiveness is not forgetting what happened in the past because what happened happened and it's not excusing it. It's accepting the fact that what happened happened. And then asking yourself, what are you going to do with it now so you're not held hostage to that event of your past? That's really what forgiveness is, right? Um, I think anybody that has really had some tough forgiveness that they've done in their life knows that it's, or anybody, you know, I just think anybody that's been through that process knows it's really not about forgetting what happened or relieving that person of what happened or whatever. It's releasing yourself from the burden of holding on to that every single day. Um, and I think in seeing other people the same way that I would want to view myself has helped me over time in Um, I don't know. I just, like, you know, I, I think about, like, the people that have, like, done me wrong in my life and stuff like that, and, um, I mean, I've had some, I've had some, I've had some tough things that, you know, with, like, relationship-wise, not necessarily even romantic ones, but even just, like, friendships, but I wouldn't say, like, I've had tons of them. That's probably one of the reasons why I do like the bullying did hit so hard for me because it's one of like the major events that happened to me in my life out of all the things that happened, you know? Um, I just don't. It will always be with me. I know that but I just don't want to be this angry, resentful person, you know? And I think on, in all honesty, like talking about it a lot on video and sharing my experiences with it have really like helped me. Like I can remember and like talking to, you know, other people about it. Like when I was, you know, doing all that stuff 
and like I would have that one person that came up to me and many, and most you know it was like I can remember like adult women would come up with me that were like you know working in the schools and whatever and they would share with me like they had gone through similar things but were bullied for different issues they were bullied over being too skinny or too tall or you know uh, having like acne was something you know that they were bullied for big ears or too curly hair, too straight of hair, or whatever, you know, and, and that it really was like profound and they were bullied on like a regular basis for it. And um and they would thank me for like sharing my story, you know? And I and I, I wanna be a story of um I wanna be a story of not just like, oh, I'm a survivor, but that I've lived. I've lived a great life. And, and a lot of that, and a lot of who I am today is because of what I went through. You know, I don't know who I would be had I not gone through that today. Um, I think I think it played to the, a detriment in my life for a very, very long time. But I also think that, and this, I'm just speaking for myself, I think there was a point where I was allowing it to as well, where I was like, okay, I'm allowing this to continue to kind of rule me um, and affect me. There's one thing to say, this, this, and this, and this happened in my life, and these things have formed me into who I am and contributed to who I am. There's another thing to wake up every day and still be angry about things that happened 20 or 30 years ago. Like, I don't want to be that person, you know? Um, I mean, I think I will forever be changed by the events of things that happened in my life, but I don't want to be a person that lives in those moments for the rest of my life, and I don't want that for anybody else either. And I definitely, you know, don't want to be... I don't want to be the reason that somebody that bullied me in 11th grade or 10th grade doesn't feel like they can move on and have closure in their life because I'm still so angry and resentful at that, you know? Um, so yeah, so it's crazy. Like I've gotten a lot of messages through the years from people and, um, and I always think kind of like in that moment, that's my opportunity to, to show some grace you know, and um, and, I'm, and I'm never just like, like, hey, yeah, it's totally fine, it's cool, whatever. Like, I'm never like that, you know. I'm always typically kind of like, yeah, like, it, like if it's something that I remember, I'm all, I, I'm typically like, yeah, like what happened, like was really hurtful to me. But I don't think that you have any. It's freedom for me too. Like when they reach out to me, you know, like it, it's really like the acknowledgement is freedom to me. That like, okay, what I went through wasn't just like it didn't matter like somebody is aware of the fact that their actions had like harmed other people and hurt people this is why i'm so big on people taking accountability and and whatever because for me when those people have done that i literally just checked the mail and now here he is <laughs> um hey um usually when those people have reached out to me and I'm like, yeah, like what you did like really hurt, but like you have no idea, I'll always say like you have no idea by you acknowledging to me what happened, like just even just like owning part of it, like what that, how much that means to me, right? And that's why I'm like really big on that with like other people when I talk about that on like my drama channel and stuff, it's like that acknowledgement and that awareness and, and to be honest with you, like most of the people, I don't even know, you know, 95% of people, I don't know what they're doing in their daily lives. I don't know if they're still bullying people or if they're mean to people. What I do know is, I don't know if they're completely changed people, but what I do know is that they've changed enough to be able to take some accountability and they felt like this random you know, day they needed to reach out to me and take some accountability or own some part of it or have some awareness and like that means a lot to me, you know? So, um, I don't know, I don't think it's a lot to let people have that freedom. It's helped me a lot, I will say, through my life. So anyway, yeah, so we're, we're going to this uh, party tonight, which will be fun, but um, I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear. I mean, I may end up staying five or six hours, I may end up staying two hours, we'll just say. Um, so last night, Alex, 
Uh, when I got home from my stuff, he like woke up. He was like, do you wanna watch shows? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so we watched Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Real Housewives of Miami, and House of Villains. Did I say that already? I feel like I might have said that already. So we watched, or did I say that on my drama channel video? I think I said it on my drama video. So we watched those. Um, and then we, and then he went to bed. Um, or he was like in bed, like watching stuff on bed or whatever. Uh, upstairs and then I watched the first episode of Vanderpump Rules from season one <laughs> I'm like okay I'm gonna start this journey and um, it was kind of funny because like I don't remember Alex watching a season I mean it's been like so this is like the 11th season that's coming up I don't remember that first season of him watching it. Like, I know the people. Like, I know, like, Sheena and Stassi and Jax and Peter and who's, like, hardly ever in the show. But, like, you know, and um, Schwartz and Sandoval and all them. I mean, I know all of them, right? Kristen. Like, I know enough to know that I don't like Stassi and I don't like Kristen and things like that. But I don't really remember why I don't like them. But it's so funny, like, watching this. And the thing that's interesting is, like, at the beginning of the show, like, how many of them, like literally every single one of them, like Katie, all of them, at one point or another talks about how famous they want to be. Like they're, it's so important for them to be famous. And I'm like, it's so interesting because like Sheena's talking about like being this pop star and she's put out some music and stuff like that, right? But like she's no like pop star, you know? But the only reason there are any of them famous today is because of Vanderpump Rules. And I think it's so interesting that they're all like, that. if you go back and you watch, I mean literally the first episode, the first season, they're all talking about like how fame hungry they are on there, right? They're all like, yeah, I just want to be, like, a famous actress. I want to be a famous this. I want to be a famous that. Whatever. I totally had forgotten, like, too, that, like, Jax at the beginning is, like, dating Stassi. And Kristen is dating Sandoval and stuff like that and have been. I mean, like, it was, like, I totally had forgotten about all that. So it was weird going back and watching that. So I started that. I watched, I watched episode one of that. And then... Um, I went up upstairs and like Alex was still up and I was hanging out with him and Boo and stuff like that. Boo's doing much better, so we're so thankful about that. Um, and so then I like went downstairs and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, um, I was gonna go back and watch more Vanderpump Rules, but then I was like, you know what, I think I'd watch like one episode of Southern Hospitality, which the second season starts on the 17th and, um... There's only eight episodes in the first season. And so Nikki and Mel and I were going to watch it, all of us together, because we're like real into like the reality TV now and the Housewives. And all. They've been binge. Mel binge watched Vanderpump Rules in like two weeks. Like, no lie. Like, all 10 seasons. And then, like, Nikki has been binge watching the Housewives and stuff like that. So we've been all like binge watching these reality shows and talking about them and stuff like that, right? So I said that all of us should watch Southern Hospitality together and that we could have that as a show. Well, Nikki started it, and she got to, like, episode four or something, and she was like, this is so bad, like, I can't continue. So I watched, like, I think either she started it or I started but anyway, I watched one episode of it. I was like, this is so dumb. This is literally, like, Vanderpump Rules on clearance. But after watching, like, episode one of season one of Vanderpump Rules, I was like, Southern Hospitality starts almost exactly the same way. Like, it's the exact same idea, the exact same concept. Van Southern Hospitality is almost exactly the same as uh, Vanderpump Rules. So I was like, well, let me go back and like maybe give Southern Hospitality another try. So I binge watched five episodes last night. I'm like on, I've like half of season six, or I have half of episode six, maybe more than half. And then episode seven and eight, I'm done. Like I binge watched the whole thing. I couldn't stop watching it. Like if, if I didn't have to go to bed last night, I could have like stayed up and watched the whole thing. It's not great, I will tell you that. Like, the people are not super, super interesting on the show. There's a couple people that are kind of interesting to me. But it's not super, super interesting. But I could have literally, like, binge-watched the whole season last night. Easily. I was kind of surprised that I was, like, that taken with it, that interested in it. But, so, um... Something needs to be tuned up in that, that mail truck, don't you think? That sounds like it needs to be tuned up a little bit. But anyway, so I watched all that. And then I finally went to bed. And um, it was late when I went to bed. It wasn't as late as I usually go to bed, but it was late. So I took my trousers down and um, was talking to Boo Radley in bed and laying next to him, like holding on to him. He was like all cuddled up in his nest and stuff. And 
fell asleep. Don't really, uh, don't really remember what happened. Taking the trazodone right before I go to bed is like, I like literally like right before I go to bed and then go upstairs. Like that's the trick. Oh, I also last night. I, okay, so this weekend my goal is like tonight, later tonight, and then tomorrow. Um, because I'm not gonna, you know, obviously do anything tomorrow unless we go to this movie. Um, and brunch. If we go to the movie, we might not go to brunch, but I don't know. Um, but. I um I want to start listening to more. Well, I want to finish listen and finish this Christmas cozy mystery because I still haven't finished the Vicky Delaney book. That was no November Peters book club book, the second Peters book club book for November. And then I want to really get in this Christmas cozy mysteries the next two weeks. Like I want to like just like be listening to one after another because I was so excited about it. I will say like I, this year as far as like watching Christmas movies and stuff like that, I'm like if I watch them, I watch them. If I don't, I don't. It's kind of how I feel about it. But with the Christmas cozy mysteries, I was so excited about it starting that if Christmas comes and goes and I've listened to one book, like I'm going to be really upset with myself. Like I know that. So, um, I really want to start listening to some audiobooks and like taking at least an hour a day. Um, and then starting on Monday, I'm going to try to start walking like at least like 20 or 30 minutes every day. And that's going to be part of like when I listen to my audiobook. So I should be able to bang some of these out. Um, yeah, that's my goal for Monday is to start walking and stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. And then, um, so I want to listen to some of that. But last night I read some more of the fangirl graphic novel, the one by Rainbow Rowell. The graphic novel is really good. It's funny because I read the book so many years ago. Well, actually, I think I listened to it on a road trip when we were going on, when we were driving to Florida. And that would have been years ago. I don't remember. I listened to like all the Rainbow Rowell books like in a row because by the time I found out about her she had like four or five books that were already out so from the fangirl book she talks so the sisters originally well now it's just one sister Kath, I think it's Kath that writes the Simon Snow which is basically like Harry Potter fan, like fan fiction that's like a big part of the book but Rainbow Rowell has gone on to write like major novels about the fan fiction of Simon Snow. I'm not, has anybody read those books like Carry On? Like I have them in my Audible, but I have no interest in reading them. But I love everything else by Rainbow Rowell. Actually, there's a Rainbow Rowell book that I think takes place over Christmas time. I think it's Landline. It's an adult, it's a, an adult book about a woman that goes home to go visit her family over Christmas and like her husband or fiance or boyfriend or something doesn't go with her. I think it's her husband. And there's like a landline phone. And they like met when she was in high school. And there's like a landline phone that she has in her bedroom, but it's not, it doesn't even work. It's not even hooked up. And then like it keeps on ringing and it's like her husband from the past. It's very Peggy Sue got married. Do you guys, am I remembering this book all wrong? It's very good though. Like I remember, like I, I, I remember like at, while I was reading, I was kind of like, this is kind of stupid. And then when I got it, I got done with it, like a couple weeks after I was like, I really liked this book. Um, I don't think she's put out anything recently. I think she's put out those Simon Snow books and I don't have any interest in that. I used to love Rainbow Rowell. I'll have to see if she's put out anything interesting lately. And Julie Murphy, has she put out, or is that her name? Julie Murphy, yeah, that wrote Dumplin'. <clears throat> has she put out anything recently? I need to look for her too, because she's one of my favorite authors of life. Um, so yeah, I want to listen to some of my audiobook. I, I read some of that fan fiction, or that fan fiction. I read some of that fangirl graphic novel. I think they say it's manga, but it doesn't read like manga. I said that before, didn't I? But I want to um, read some more of that tonight, listen to my cozy mystery, and then I want to finish Southern Hospitality and then like start binging Vanderpump Rules. I at least want to like finish the first season by Monday. There's 10 seasons. And you guys, the first the first season has 10 episodes and like every season after that has like 21 to 24 episodes. I honest to God don't know how I'm gonna finish Vanderpump Pump Rules by, by January. I have no clue how I'm gonna do it. Um, Cause I think it comes out like January 12th or something like that or January 10th. I mean, that gives me like four or five weeks and I wanna watch Christmas shows and stuff in there. Like I have no idea how I'm gonna binge watch the show but I'm gonna do my best. Cause I wanna find out everything. Thousand Pound Sister starts this week. So, yeah.
It's a very winter day in Indiana. It's like very gray, bluish gray skies, no leaves in the trees. It's not like super cold, but it's like cold enough. I actually just have one of my plastic Birkenstocks. I don't even have any socks on my shoes. And so it's like, I, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I have to have a coat on. I'm trying to do a little bit better with the eating. I did better last night. Um, I just like heated up some stuff that I had left. Like things that I've had in the fridge for a while, like leftovers and stuff like that, I've been like trying to like get rid of and things that like I don't, like stuff that I've had like as snacks and whatever, but like, if you guys, I don't know if you'll know what, what I'm talking about. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's like this, but like you keep certain things and like in desperate measures, you go to those things. But <clears throat> like I need to like have Alex take these candy bars from Halloween to work. Like I need to get this. There's like a half a box left of those Costco candy bars. He needs to take those to work. A lot of like our pantry is pretty bare right now. Our refrigerator other than his Cokes and my Diet Cokes are pretty bare. Um, we don't have a lot of stuff in there because if it's not stuff that I'm eating, um, I'm trying to get rid of, and if it's snack stuff like a bag of crack or box of crackers or bag of chips or something like that that I opened like a few weeks ago, like one time, but like I'm like, okay, I might want to save this in case I'm really hungry and there's nothing else to eat. I've been getting rid of that stuff because I just don't need it here. Because if it's not here, I won't eat. <clears throat> um, and like I'm almost done with the dips. I won like. Thing. I have like just a little bit left of that jalapeno, cranberry jalapeno dip left, and then it's like no dips. I'm so sad about the dips. I love the dips. So I did a little bit better last night, so I'm proud of myself. Um, and uh, I did have a little bit of like while we were watching our shows, I got kind of like snacky. This is why I can't have this stuff in the house. Because I had done the review of that this Trader Joe's gingerbread ice cream, and so I broke it out, and um, I had a little bit of that. I just don't need to keep this stuff around the house. Like to review it is one thing, but like you know, like if I review something like uh, back in the day when I would review like the Starbucks drinks or like a food or whatever, like Taco Bell slushy, like I would take a couple drinks out of it. And I would either like, you know, give it to like one of the girls that works for Tanya or like throw it out or whatever, right? There's no reason why I can't review something that I buy from Trader Joe's for $3 and then try it and then get rid of it. Like, I don't need to keep it. I can give it to Caroline. I can give it to, you know, somebody else. I don't need to keep that stuff around the house. There's no reason to do that. So, um, so yeah. I feel like I can do this weight thing. I feel pretty empowered to do it. So I think I can do it and I'll be okay. I was coming up here. They're like slowly going by my house. They have tinted windows and everything. What's going on? They are, oh my God, they are staring me down. What is going on? They stopped and now they're backing up. person is doing they're literally just sitting in the middle of the street they're literally just sitting in the middle of the street I'm like really tempted to tell you I'm really tempted to see like I'm gonna go out here and act like I'm getting my mail I'm gonna see if, if I go out here and they start like speeding away Can I help you? I'm waiting for somebody. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I just wonder because nobody just like stops right here. Oh, okay. I'll get my mail while I'm out here. Now I feel bad. I think it's my neighbor's sister across the street. Do 
see me go like this with the window. Oh, we got Christmas cards. Oh my lord! Aww. This is a friend of mine. And, um, when he, um, when he was during the lockdown, his mom had, um, so his mom has like a lake house and it's just him and his mom left and bye. Oh, that's who she was picking up. I was like, who is she picking up? She's picking up my neighbor, but she was like sitting in the middle of the street. She must not know like where she was. But anyway, um, so anyway, um, he like stayed with his mom. Like, I mean, literally for like six to eight months because she's older and stuff like that. And he did that Noom the whole time. Like he was posting about it a lot. He did Noom the whole time that they were like on lockdown. He literally lost like a hundred and like, 40 pounds or 60, 160, I mean, some ridiculous amount of weight. He looks fantastic. So proud of him. And um, they're so cute. They like, he like does all these puzzles with his mom. And so like, it, like they started with like puzzle number one and it was like a joke, like during the lockdown, they would post like a picture and they'd be like, puzzle one complete. And it was like this like really small, like little puzzle that they had done. Now they're like these humongous puzzles and it's like puzzle like 462 or something like that. 480, it's like these crazy puzzles, right? And they've like done so many puzzles together and I love that. It was really sweet that he sent us the card. It's a picture of him too <laughs> in all of his weight loss glory and he looks great too he looks really really good um and then we got another christmas card but i don't know who this is from that says alex's name first so i'll let him open it i have no idea who this person is i thought it was my neighbor across the street because her sister's car is in the driveway, so I thought it was her sister, but it because it was my neighbor. But anyway. So yeah, that's the plan. Stan. Oh my god, is the battery dying already? I haven't vlogged that long. I vlogged for 20 minutes and then stopped it. And now it's at 26 minutes, almost 27 minutes. So I've only vlogged for like 47 minutes. I think I need to get some new batteries. But the problem is now I have like four rotating batteries and I don't know which ones are new or which ones are old. There's my neighbor's sister, she's leaving. So I don't know which ones are old and which ones are new. Um, so I don't know which like ones to get rid of. But like this would be like a perfect time for like, okay, on this one, be like set this one aside and be like, okay, this is one that's like, cause it's died. Cause I literally just took this right out of the charger and it is at the 47 minute, isn't that how long I've logged? 47 minute mark right now. So, I don't know, maybe that is a good sign to uh, get off here now and uh, start getting ready for uh, my big party tonight, my big party. <laughs> I actually was thinking, I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna wear my new Brick, Brooks Brothers green and blue like plaid shirt that I got. It's like checked shirt that, you know what I'm talking about? It's like check mark, not check marks. <laughs> but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, yeah, that's like green and blue. I think I'm gonna wear that with like these jeans that have like holes in them, that I, the buffalo jeans. And then I think I'm gonna wear these like zip up. They're, they're not cowboy boots, they're like round toe boots. Well, not necessarily round toe, but they're not like pointed like cowboy boots. I think I'm gonna wear those tonight. That's what that's my outfit that I'm gonna wear tonight. Cause those Brooks Brothers shirts like hang like right below the top of the jeans. So they're like, per the way that they're cut are like perfect. So I think I'm gonna wear that tonight. That's gonna be my little outfit. Like kind of casual, but kind of cute Saturday night. Like, you know, maybe this jacket. I don't know, we'll see what jacket I wear. Anyway, let me know what you guys are doing in the comment section below and how you are spending your weekend. And um, like I said, I'm not gonna vlog tomorrow or do any videos tomorrow, so I'll be back on Monday. And I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. That was a little Christmas tune, did you hear that? And remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want, or your week, or your weekend if you need to. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, 
don't tell anyone. Just do it because it's a nice thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It's good to put positivity and love out there in the world. And now my toes are starting to get a little bit cold. It's funny that I said that earlier. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much it means to you. Just text them, you know, call them, send them a postcard, send them a letter. I don't know, just say hi. Anyway, walk down the street and wave, say hi, it's easy as that. And also, be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit. Be kinder to yourself and love yourselves a little bit more because if you're kinder to yourself, then you'll be kinder to others, and if you love yourself more, you'll love other you'll love others more. If you're if you love yourself more, you'll love others more as well. And I love you guys so much, and I hope that you have a fantastic, great, amazing miracle-filled, wonderful, fabulous. Just have a good rest of the weekend. And I love you guys so much, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye. Love you.